Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on crypto. Hope you had a great day. There's a lot to unpack. Andres or Andre Kronji or Kronji, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, believes that crypto needs regulation. And we'll get into that because he's actually a significant figure in the space. And I mean, seriously significant. Uh, Terra UST has flipped Binance USD to become the third largest stable coin by market cap. There's a little bit more there than meets the eye. Um, Ireland, this is a major, a major state move. Ireland is banning uh, crypto as a political donation in its election process, and for obvious reasons. Um, MetaMask has issued a warning to Apple users. Um, if you're backing up an iCloud, that could be a problem for you. So we'll dig into that. So first, Andre Kronje, we'll just call him Anya because I, and Andre, I know I'm killing his last name. I'm so sorry. If you see this, I apologize. Um, he was actually really, really big. He was with Arno Nell working with, uh, working with Phantom Foundation as a, as a developer, um, strategist, that kind of thing. And he actually developed, uh, Yearn F, Yearn Fi, uh, which was obviously a DeFi. Um, so he's a major figure and he left him and Arno left crypto altogether. Just said, Oh, I'm done. And Andre actually deleted his Twitter account. He has since released a, a, uh, an article on Medium basically saying that crypto is like a baby that's trying to stick their finger in a light socket, right? And regulation would represent the plastic that you put over the light socket so the baby can't hurt itself. That actually kind of makes sense when you think about it. There are a lot of people investing in crypto that really aren't taking the time to understand or haven't matured enough to understand what's really going on, and that could put them at risk. And that regulation can help diminish that risk. It's not to say the baby can't get their finger in there by removing the plastic or whatever, but it's to say it's a harder process and it would stop a lot of babies from hurting themselves until they grew up and understood why they shouldn't do that. So that's actually pretty significant. And I, you know, frankly, I don't think that many people would argue with that. It, you know, it is something that needs regulation. I think the, the problem that most people like myself have is that there's inconsistent regulation. And that's where the problem is. So we'll see how that how it all pans out. But it's it's pretty cool that he actually came out and said something like that. At least that's how I feel. Um, and I do believe that crypto needs needs some regulation. I'm not saying it needs an iron fist or anything like that. But it also can't be the wild wild west. Just saying. Uh, Stablecoin Terra UST overtook Binance's USD to become the third largest stablecoin by market cap. Now. That's really cool, but there's something else, and, th and that says that you know it's a mo it, and that's 15% move, a 15% move in 30 days. Okay, so that's significant. But what's even more significant is that was a 15% move on about a quarter of the volume. So Binance USD has. 75 or four times as much volume, four times as much. I'm just like, wow, that's, that's pretty significant. That is pretty significant. That's something to pay attention to as you see Terra Luna keep taking off. Usage is going up. I think volume is going up. There are a lot of things that you should be paying attention to. And, you know, and right now it's on sale. It really is. I think it's at $94. And we'll get into the numbers a little bit later, but I think that's where it is. Um, Ireland banning digital asset donations to political campaigns is a very big deal. The reason why is because Russia has been interfering with elections around the world for a while, and governments are taking notice. And they're doing something about it. And this is one of Ireland's things that they're doing to kind of thwart that. And it's significant because, you know, with digital assets, you can get external interference. And by cutting that, you're diminishing that external interference, meaning it's you're diminishing another route that money can take to invest in undermining your, you know, your legal practices within your own state. It goes to show you, you know, 
Russia's not innocent, and they've been doing a lot of nefarious things for a long time. So it's something to think about. And I think it's a smart move. I think they're doing other moves as well, but that's a significant move, and it's and it's meant to it's meant to send a statement. Now, this last one, MetaMask issued a warning to iCloud users. So if you're an iCloud user and you have a MetaMask account, if you are using iCloud, iCloud will actually back up your private keys into the cloud. If your account, if you get phished and your account is otherwise compromised, those MetaMask keys are sitting there and ripe for the taking. So they're advising you to create strong passwords for your Apple account, because right now you can actually use Apple Pay directly to purchase coins instead of directly uh, depositing ETH, you know, Ethereum or Ether or ETH into your wallet you know, to make those purchases. That is significant. That is very much significant. So pay attention to that. I would take it a step further and say, hey, look, listen, if you're doing something like that, like I use, I have an iPhone. I do not back anything up to iCloud, nothing, not even my pictures, nothing. If I lose it, I lose it. It's my fault. I lose it. But I treat my phone as if I'm walking around with a private bank. I want to make sure everything on that phone is secure. Can't open up an app without me, without me unlocking it. Things like that are a very big deal. So if you have a MetaMask account, and you're using the MetaMask app on your iPhone, ensure that you are using a very strong password for your Apple account, okay? And be mindful of any phishing that would go on because it's not going to be necessarily Apple's fault that you got phished, somebody snagged you, and you gave up your account information, and all of a sudden they've got access to a lot of information. Be mindful of what you're backing up and where you're backing it up to. Okay? Let's hit the numbers. It's been an interesting day. An interesting day. We'll, we'll, we'll put it like that. Okay? Um, actually, you know what? I didn't open up the spreadsheet to show you winners and losers. And, you know, just to be consistent, let's do that. Do, 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 do. Just bear with me for a moment. Machine's not too slow, but let's make sure it opens up. I know what? Let's hit DeFi Llama. We've got 212 billion in total value locked. That's actually a significant number. Doing well. Not too much movement up and down, but doing well. You have Fear and Greed Index. Let's refresh this to make sure. And you're at 27. So you're, we've moved in the wrong direction and you were, we're in fear, but at least we're not in extreme fear. And again, I still see that there's a significant from right around here. There's still a significant amount of pent up positive energy. There's a lot of positive going on right now. Not a lot of negative except for Russia's stupid ass war. I know. I know. I'm trying. Mm. Just one of those things. It's a stupid ass war. I could say a lot more about that. I'm not going to, but until that macro event is changed, that pent up energy is going to stay pent up with certain leakages that happened. Um, like a couple of weeks ago, we bumped, we bumped up a bit. Uh, today we hit 41. We're back down to battling to stay within 40. Uh, we were down as much as, I think, 38, 38, 39 for, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's right now at 40,886. 40, so you can see, you can see right here how we dipped so far down that we were in the 38 range right there. Right. So there's significant, there's significant opportunity to move back up. But imagine what that move up would be like, even in the short term. You're talking about bounces of different coins from five to 10% like that. And there are a lot of opportunities out there. And we can take a look at, oh, just popped up. There you go. We can take a look at this and you can see Ether was down at around 28, 29, you know, just a couple of days ago. Luna is below 100. It was at what, 122 just a few days ago, April 4th or something like that. April 4th, April 8th, around there. So that's a lot. That's a, that's big move. 
So you still have that potential of those moves that are going on. Solana is down a lot. Even though it's in the green right now, it's green because the last move was green, but it's still down by a significant amount. So is Avalanche. Um, so is Cardano below a dollar. That's a steal. Uh, Ripple below, you know, below 80 cents. That's a steal. It was at 70. Think about this. That was a 10% move. Did you miss it? It was a 10% move. It was at 70 cents just a couple of days ago. So 70 cents to 77? Yeah, that's 10%. Significant chances to make money even while the market's low if you're paying attention. That's all I'm asking you to do is do your research, start to understand rhythms, and pay attention to what's going on. There's money to be made. There really is significant money to be made. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> make a couple of bucks here and there. And it's it's not necessarily, oh, you have to hold on for dear life to everything. That's not it. That's not it. I have a bunch of stuff that I'm holding and I have a bunch of stuff that I play with. Right? And I skim the profits from the play with and put it over there. Skim, put it over there. Skim, put it over there. And then I wait for another dip and I buy back in. And then I, and I just wash, rinse, repeat. That's it. That's it. It's, that, that's all I'm trying to do. Just a little bit at a time. And you'll start to see, well, you know, I wanted to make, you know, $1,000. Great. You can do it in chunks of 50, chunks of 100. Maybe you get lucky and there was a really big move. But most likely you're going to do chunks of 50, chunks of 100. That's really where you are. 5 to 10% move. Boom. 5 to 10% move. Understand what those rhythms are going to be, right? Or what they are. Doesn't predict the future, but you can kind of see what they are. And I'm never fully out. So if things start to shoot up, I don't have that fear of missing out or FOMO because I'm already in. I've got my whole hold all thing right here. I DCA over here and I'm investing and playing over here. Long term, short to midterm. That's how I'm doing it. And I didn't switch the I didn't switch the screen, so you didn't get to see anything. So we'll go back. DeFi Llama 212, Fear and Greed Index 27. You're at the you know you're you're fearful, but you're close to extreme fear. But I think it's moving in another direction. You still have a lot of pent up positive energy, and this still looks like what happened here, what happened in this range over here. What happened even in this range as it went down, it eventually went up. These are the moves that I'm talking about. This is what I'm saying you should be paying attention to. When I'd say Bitcoin, you can see that Bitcoin was all the way down at 38, about 38, 400, 500. That's a significant move when you say, well, it's back up to above 40,000. That's a crucial number, 40,000. But even as it moved from here to there, there was still a lot of money to be made. Right, that's with Bitcoin. When you look at all these others, you're seeing Terra Luna under 100, Matic. You can make money near networks. You can make money. These are these are coins that have bumped up, made money, come back down, bumped up, made money, come back down. Pay attention to some of these movers. Pay attention. Um, Cardano is below 100. Just a little while ago, is at 122. I think April 4th, 8th, April 8th. The way I was saying, there are movers that you can make money with. OK, pay attention to those things. And you can see right here where, you know, UST actually I can un, let me unfavor it and then show everything. And you can see how UST has flipped Binance. Who's Binance is actually in a deal with Gulf Energy. They are a holding company in Thailand. They, they got investigated in Thailand and they said, hey, you know, you're doing digital asset businesses in the country illegally. So they had to kind of shut down and Gulf Energy made an investment in Binance. And this is how Binance is going to start making, taking steps to move back over um, into Thailand. So there are things going on around the world that are positive and that are going to have a long term effect. Right. So pay attention to these things. It's 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 not hard to sit down for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. If you have it, even 30 minutes a day and just sniff around, look around, see what's going on. Pay attention to the charts, pay attention to the news, pay attention to what these projects are doing. Go to their Twitter accounts, go to their website. What are they doing? Did they make an announcement that they're going to do something that the street hasn't picked up yet that maybe I didn't even report on yet? 
and you go, wow, that's going to be positive when people start talking about it. That's an opportunity. I have spoken about more opportunities than I've actually invested in. And then I've turned around and watched a lot of those opportunities to fruition where I could, where I could literally point to a couple of things and go, man, I just missed 20% right there. Oh, I just missed 10% right there. I can't catch everything. I can't. But I was able, I'm teaching myself to start to identify when some of the coins that I'm interested in are making moves that aren't hitting the general population yet and then saying, oh, I can make a move on that, right? That's, that to me is a big deal. Now, for me, I'm looking at getting into some more Cardano. Um, who else was there? There was Cardano. Um Algo is another one that I want to get into. XRP is another one I want to get into. There are a few coins that I really want to, you know, build more with those particular coins. And the reason why is because they're going to do something. They're going to do something. And if they're going to do something, I want to be a part of that part of that positive move. Again, a lot of these coins are nowhere near, nowhere near their all time highs. Nowhere near. So I have an opportunity to get in while it's low and sit back for a little while and watch them rise. That's what I'm talking about. So if you find my information helpful, useful, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, kind of tells me that, hey, I'm doing things that's helpful to people. So that's a big deal to me. I like helping people. And it also helps me show my kids that, hey, we're doing positive things because this is who I'm sharing it with. Um, and also hit this, hit the, uh, the notification bell so you know when I'm dropping another video. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.